Hi there, welcome back. Samantha here from Culpeper County Parks and Recreation. We hope you're doing well today. And we have another seasonal installation of our crafty creations. Thank you very much to Culpeper Media uh, and for our audience for joining us today to do something basic and simple, keeping it simple, but of course, Everyone has their own unique, uh, unique way of doing things, and um, that's what makes it exciting. So here's what I'd like to do today. We're going to do decoupage pumpkins. And decoupage, I think most people these days are familiar with. French term, I believe, uh, is to cut and to glue layers of things to make uh, yet another um, product. Uh, and Mod Podge, which is something you can easily find these days rather than making your own glue and then having a separate finish. Um, this is kind of an all-in-one sort of thing and it's very easy. It has different finishes and it's kind of foolproof. And anything you can think of, you can, if you can form it around a pumpkin, you can certainly um, do the decoupage. It's just uh, whatever you feel is what you're prepared to do and what mood you're in. Um, so what I will do is get started with one example. Um, and you can, by the way, use fake pumpkins if you have them. One thing I would recommend, and you could do this for the real pumpkin as well, is to paint it white um, when you are thinking of doing something with fabric or a napkin or something like that. It will, because the Napkins, depending on what you use, might have, uh, you know, it's, it's napkin, so it's, it's going to be somewhat of a transparent sort of thing. Um, and when you put the, the white as the primer or the background, it will help that pop and give it some more um, uh, visibility, I suppose. But I'll show you what we have here. This is simply a pumpkin that has had um, several layers of a decorated paper napkin, like so. And you can do this in a variety of ways. Um, what I'm going to do here to show you is uh, you're going to get your Mod Podge ready. Let's put this back over here. And let's go ahead. We're going to do the larger pumpkin. I'm going to choose my design. We're going to do napkins. I like the skulls here. Uh, I don't think we will need all of two napkins, but I think essentially that's, that will be enough to get us started. I'm going to put this on the side there. And Give this a shake. Oh boy. <laughs> Isn't that funny? The top has, ah, there we go. Just have to get it warm. Loosen it up a little bit. All right, just pour a generous amount. You don't have to overdo it because you don't want to be wasteful, but you could always pour it back in if you need to. And once you have that ready, these foam brushes are the best way of applying uh, this sort of thing. Very quick and easy. It helps get the surface as well as the, uh, you know, the lines and the bumps and things in the surface of the pumpkin. So you have that. Now what you need to do here, take your scissors, unfold your napkin, and then just cut it into four squares. And as I said, you can do this in various ways. Um, you may not want, uh, you know, maybe you just want an abstract mixture of the design. Um, but being that this is a skull and something you can readily identify with, we'll try to keep this intact at least for two of the sides of the pumpkin. And I'm going to take this here this black border, and I'm going to remove that uh, just to keep it 
simple and uniform. Okay. All right, and the same for this guy. But again, you could uh, cut into strips and you could kind of make a mosaic. You could even take the shape of the skull and make a mosaic. Be creative. You don't necessarily have to be by the book. Um, but I think you'll find once you do one with fabric, paper, paper towels, newspaper, anything, anything really that has a print on it that you enjoy, you can start experimenting with your, your pumpkins. All right, so we're going to have these ready here. Kind of give some thought as to your palette here on the pumpkin as to what you're going to do. And, you know, if, if you're really picky about what it's going to look like and you have a true vision, you might want to um, take the stem and its orientation into uh, consideration. If not, let's just get started. Go ahead and we're just going to keep putting a generous amount of the Mod Podge or your glue mixture, whatever your adhesive is, on the pumpkin. And again, this is simple. Some people will actually use a spray adhesive and then put the Mod Podge mixture over it once it, once it has adhered. Uh, you could do that as well. And you want to work quickly and work in batches, I think. Make sure that you use this tip end to get into the grooves there. Now, usually what you would do in this process is you would uh, go ahead and get the um, solution onto your surface as well as on whatever it is you're going to take and put onto the pumpkin. In this case, this is kind of a delicate thing. You don't really want to chance putting something on this. So what you can do here is just kind of carefully press down. Now you're going to have some folding uh, and overlapping. That's OK. Not a problem. And then what you want to do once you have it placed is you're going to go back over it like so. And you can also use your fingers. That is an effective tool to go over. And the Mod Podge is pretty forgiving. Uh, it's super adhesive, and when it dries thoroughly, which doesn't really take long, you know, overnight in a day, uh, it dries clear. And of course, you get a choice of finishes. Um, but you can do this in steps. You can simply put on uh, the one coat onto the object, put your item on, and then um, as long as it is to your liking, you know, it's, it's situated and fixed there, you don't really need to put any more on. You can actually wait until you've completed the entire pumpkin and then put one more layer of your surface coat. One thing I will also mention is have handy, if you're not in the kitchen near a sink, have something where you can um, frequently wet your hands because they will get sticky, and when you're working with the napkins in particular, it will tear if you're not careful. So if you want to keep your image and your, your surface intact, um, have something where you can keep them moist. All right, so let's do one. Let's just do on the other side here, opposite. And as I say, not a lot to it. It's kind of a no-fail thing. I mean, really, the biggest part of it all is just finding your, your materials, your pumpkin, 
and your Mod Podge and whatever it is you're going to use, whether you go and you find it specifically or you just use what's around the house. Now, as I had said, you could prime the pumpkin white. Um, get yourself a good spray, uh, spray can of white primer. You could spray the whole pumpkin, including the stem, and that would give it sort of a nice, uh, you know, consistent, coordinated look. Um, I think that is sufficient. Okay, I'll try to show this to you here. Once again, kind of situate it before you actually place it onto the pumpkin because even though you can slide it around slightly, it does tend to stick very uh, quickly. There we go. And I think some of the folds and things give it some character. Um, okay, again, let's put this in like so. When you're picking out your pumpkins, and if you have a fake pumpkin, it this really does help because you've got something you can kind of move it around, reposition it. Um, so make sure when you're picking out your pumpkins that you find a nice, steady, strong stem. That will be meaningful. Plus, I believe it will certainly give you some indication of the, uh, the health of the gourd. Something that will last you for a few weeks so you can enjoy it over the holidays. Every now and again you might get some gloop. So you, it, it is forgiving as I'm repeating myself and saying, but you know, you can make an effort to smooth it out. Certainly professionals uh, would be very meticulous about this sort of uh, art because um, you would have something that you would smooth and smooth and smooth. And even for an object like this, you may use something like, for example, you could use plastic wrap because that won't adhere to the surface and you could take that and you could smooth it. But I think, in my opinion, having done this a few times, it, it really, it doesn't matter. All right. And the neat thing about this, like with a lot of uh, various art projects, is that I don't know, sometimes you're looking at it and you're thinking, this looks ridiculous. Like, it just looks like a bunch of gloppy glue and it's, you know, what's this? But once uh, it, it has dried and cured effectively, it really, really does look nice. Um, and let's go ahead and put the other two skulls here, just so we can have a finished product. And you can just see, by the time you have gotten the two uh, sides, you know, and you're, you're at 50 percent coverage, it gets easier. And I want to say, I would not forget that you, know, you're, you are going to have areas at the top and the bottom that are going to need additional uh, care. Um, because despite the fact that you could probably get away with not doing anything on the bottom, you do want to put something at the top. Um, all right, so we're just very, again, so you can see. You can even just take your hand and, and press over, and then, now, you'll see here, you don't want that part of the design to overlap. So what you can do is just snip it off, and then we will kind of fix the rest of it. Same for this side. Take and trim. 
and being very careful there. We're going to continue here. And I think you get the point. I just wanted to be, at least give you the majority of the pumpkin to be covered. And don't be afraid to um, smooth it over so that all of your sides and pieces here have been covered. And very quickly what I will do is I will take, since I have some leaves here, I will cut the stems. The stems really aren't going to adhere, so you could always put to cover that top your leaves there, just like this. And you can see how easily this adheres at this point. And maybe take and put another there. And if I had another leaf, I would certainly Put one, let's see, another dry leaf. Alas, I don't have any handy, but this is essentially uh, what you're going to do. You're going to continue to cover all the surfaces until you see none of the orange or white. Um, and then once everything has dried, then you can come back and you can apply a surface coat um, or you know, we can just continue to put more and more on this way. Use your fingers. If you find that everything has been sufficiently glued down and is as flat as you can possibly get it, then certainly by all means, uh, Consider yourself done, at least initially, and then if you find once it's dried you would like more um, as a lacquer uh, and a smoother surface, you could do that. Um, so that is pretty much what you're looking at for, you know, paper, cloth, what have you. Um, finished product here. Like I said, this, if you could see closely, you could see where it does have a, a finish and a second coat, and you can see where it doesn't. So that's what, why it might be a nice idea to come back and do that uh, a couple of times, actually. So I will put this aside right here. And you know, these guys are so tiny, you could probably adhere these. They might actually stick. Um, like so. Let's go ahead and very quickly, I wanted to show you the botanical pumpkins. These are um, also very easy. You can do any sort of pumpkin gourd, um, you know, even like butternut squash and, you know, the, the edible types, even though these pumpkins, these might be edible, not quite sure, but like this one, for example, uh, is not. This is very, very hard. Um, and uh, this is the one I will use for our sample. But let's go ahead and put this back here. We need, obviously, we need more of our adhesive. And this is when, you know, you go back out and you want to find appropriate things that you can put onto your pumpkin. Um, if you paint them, they can be rather beautiful. You could paint them, you know, if you want to be uh, kind of in a fall or even a Halloween mood, anything from black, red, white. You could actually put a design that you paint onto this and then adhere uh, your um, ferns, which I will add, ferns are easy. 
uh, and leaves, butterfly bush, uh, cone flowers, anything that has, that you've just picked so that it has some resistance to it and is not so rigid. And if you do leaves, you want them dry, but if they're crunchy, obviously they're going to be very difficult to adhere onto the uh, pumpkin. All right, so same, same idea. Now this one has a, uh, a smoother surface, so you may want to be maybe a little, a little more precise in your, your strokes, okay? And then once you have something like that, take the ferns work really well because they're very dainty. Uh, and very paper-like, so they will adhere super well. And you just like you did with the paper. This is a lot of taking fingers. And you wanna do the initial uh, positioning, like so. Just be very delicate and careful. And once you would at least have some adhesion, that's when you can take and spread some more. Like so. Just be mindful, don't go ripping your finger off because it will, uh, it will pull it off. And then the stems at the end can be problematic, but you know, you can play with it. You can kind of hold it down uh, stem to stem, meaning to the stem here where it goes in, uh, as well as the stem of the fern. But what I would recommend doing is you can always trim it once it is properly cured. But this is essentially it. Some people like to use petals, say for example, rose petals or pansies, things like that. Just experiment because some are easier to work with than others, but it's a very gentle process. And as you can see, it gets easier and easier. You kind of find your sweet spot in terms of what, uh, what works when you're applying the glue um, and I think for me, I feel like I would probably allow this to set uh, rather than, um, you know, I'm trying to withhold my want of getting it to stick more. But I think this will be good. Give it a little bit of time uh, to dry. Work on the other parts of the pumpkin. Put on your leaves, you know, any way you would like. Uh, now these... Let's just put some here. These, I think, because they're not as delicate as the fern, you can actually take and apply your mixture or your Mod Podge like this and take and place it and just push it down like this with your finger. and then just go over it again. And that is pretty much it. We could continue to go through, but this really is all there is to it. It is so easy um, and fun. You get to experiment with, uh, you know, finishes as well. These are, you know, this is a matte finish, but it still kind of has a, a shine to it, um, that sealer quality. So um, we hope you'll give it a try. If you haven't tried decoupage on uh, pumpkins or gourds, it is a lot of fun. Um, something I've never tried, but I'd like to do this season, is to actually carve a pumpkin. Um, 
and somehow figure out how to get uh, some design uh, on the outside, perhaps using an awl or something where you're poking holes. And once you've done that, uh, you could actually try the decoupage and see how that works. That way you could illuminate. So anyway, we hope that you've enjoyed uh, our work today. And please, as always, keep in touch. Let us know what you think. And please stay safe and be good to one another. We'll see you next time. Keep it crafty.